Hi, everyone. It's Doreen. Really glad to introduce you to my friend and sister in Christ, Allison Rossborough. Um, she and I met through Instagram because she's been doing a lot of teaching about progressive Christianity. This is a topic that I covered with Alyssa Childers and Melissa Doherty last year, but I want to tell you I've learned so much more since then, and I'm really glad to just zero in on what is progressive Christianity and why is it heretical and spiritually dangerous. Allison's going to tell her story about coming out of progressive Christianity deception and why it, their points aren't biblical and pointing us back to the gospel and scripture and Jesus. So I got saved about 10 years ago, a little bit more than 10 years ago. Um, progressive Christianity wasn't really a thing 10 years ago. It was kind of the emergent church thing going on, which then morphed into progressive Christianity. Um, so my church that I grew up in um, was very liberal. I didn't know it was very liberal. I just thought this was church. And one of the interesting things is like, I didn't really learn a lot of theology growing up. It was more of just Bible stories um, and just understanding. And this is what I was taught. Everyone is a child of God. Everyone on the earth is a child of God. Um, and they really emphasize that um, at camp. Now, looking back, yes, progressive Christianity wasn't a thing then, but it was starting to boil up to the surface, if that makes sense. Can, um, can I just stop you for a minute? Because people are going to be stuck on what's the problem with saying everyone's a child of God. Um, so the idea that um, everyone is a child of God um, comes out of the theology of universalism, where Jesus died for everyone, regardless of, regardless if they believe in him. So meaning Jesus died for Muslims, Jesus died for Hindus, Buddhists, all religions, New Age, everyone. This is, this is not John 3.16 at all. No, it's not. <laughs> this is everyone goes to heaven. Exactly. Mm -hmm. um, so that's what I was taught, that everyone is a child of God. Everyone goes to heaven because Jesus died for us all. So, and not just believers. Exactly. Okay. The big thing, though, that was really, like, hunkered down was if you do all these things, like go to church, go, to mission, go on a mission trip, go to church camp, be kind to everyone, um, you know, whatever gamut of being a good person is, you are following Jesus, therefore you are a Christian, which that's a work system. That's not, you know putting your faith in Jesus Christ. He, yeah. He tells us, if you love me, you'll obey me, but exactly. that's not how we get saved. That's, exactly. that's the fruit that shows salvation. Exactly. I was never told anything about sin at all. Um, I was just told, do these things. You'll be a Christian. You're a Christian then. And then you go to heaven. But one of the things I remember distinctly was, okay, are we supposed to have some sort of relationship with God? Because I have other relatives who are evangelical Christians and it, their lives looked completely different than ours. Is that part of the progressive Christianity that there's no repentance? Mm -hmm. So there's no well, sin, no repentance. There's no, like th there is sin and we'll get more into that with um, when we get toward the eight, like dive into the eight points. Um, but it's very much, okay, yes, there's sin, but you can make up for your sin, if that makes sense, by doing this. Well, that sounds like Catholicism. I know, right? <laughs> and so I there's sacraments to deal with your sin instead of repentance. Yeah. So but, were you being encouraged to be in the Word daily? I mean, no? no? Oh, my goodness. So, so yeah. you're just, this sounds like my Christian science upbringing, Allison. It sounds like you said you're told you're a Christian, but do whatever you want. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that's honest, like, honestly, that's one of the reasons why I want to speak out against this, because I'm not the only one who's questioning this stuff. And I know that, and I want to get the word out being like, hey, this is wrong. Jesus loves you. He's come to save you from your sin so you can be freed from it. That's right. What yeah. I've heard about progressive Christian churches and emergent churches is it was, it's really centered around socialization, fellowship, 
and um, and doing good works out in the community, which are both really important, but that's that's not the gospel. No, Do you no, agree with not. that kind of observation? Yeah, no. Um, and actually, I'll get into that right now because um, I went to seminary um, after I got saved. Okay, uh, this is this is interesting. So I was saved at twenty three, um, and I. It was one of those, yes, it was an experience per se, but God used the experience to point me to his word and to the gospel. So I wouldn't say the experience saved me, but Jesus did because of how he used the experience. Um, I'm always like very particular about it when I I talk about it because I don't want to get people confused. Um, And it was just one of those basic, it, it was basically, I was questioning if God existed and then I prayed this prayer and then he answered it. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> wait, God exists. This is awesome. The Bible we, We've got to address that. So when you say he answered that, you're not still talking about a voice or a vision. No, 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 you're no, talking no. about his word. No. It, yeah. So okay. um, in, in I'll, I'll make it really short. Mm-hmm. So um, after college, after undergrad, um, I ended up back at my home church. Um, I was in this really weird state kind of thing. I did a whole summer of partying and now I was a nanny and all this stuff. And I was really questioning if God existed. Um, so I went back to my, the church I grew up in and I was working, work, well, working, volunteering as a youth advisor. Um, and we went to a youth conference. Um, and I remember going and thinking, oh, goodness, all the evangelicals are there. I'm not that type of Christian. What am I doing at this conference? (laughs) And I remember thinking, they're all crazy. (laughs) I'm not crazy. (laughs) What did you Um, see as the difference between yourself as a progressive Christian and an evangelical Christian? um, Just the fact that I saw them as the crazy ones who actually believe God's word was true. Oh, naive almost. Yeah. Wow. Um, at this conference and I question if God exists in my heart and I just pray the simple prayer in, in my head, not like I'm not making this big like announcement or anything like that. Um, and then within a 20 minute span, the, the prayer is answered. And like immediately I'm like, whoa, oh my goodness, the Bible's true. I need to read it. <laughs> so so you similar to me, you had an epiphany mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. because you'd been hearing it. Oh, that's so mm-hmm. interesting. You must really relate to my testimony. <laughs> yeah. So so you you just knew the Bible was inerrant. Yeah, it just it just kind of hit me like this is this is true. I need to read it. Jesus was a real person. I need to read what he says and I need to understand. And then from there, like, um, I ended up at a Bible believing church. Um, so glad you're out. And you actually introduced me to the website for progressive Christianity, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. progressive Christianity.org, which Mm -hmm. if you go on it, this is all heresy. So it's Mm -hmm. for research purposes only. Mm -hmm. Um, and they have eight points and this is what you had talked about on your Instagram account. Yeah. yeah. Um, and so what I wanted to do is just kind of go through the eight heretical points of progressive Christianity. Okay. I know I'm going to get letters because last a couple of weeks ago, I posted that progressive Christianity is just new age with a Christian veneer. And mm-hmm. I got letters, but <laughs> prove me wrong. <laughs> prove me wrong that this is heresy. Okay. Um, because this is, this is, um, these are hills to die on. These are, uh, primary points, and especially when we get into mm-hmm. how they view the Bible and Jesus, mm-hmm. it's not orthodox. So, so point number one of progressive Christianity that is not something we follow is believe that following the path of the teacher Jesus, let's see, this is what Christian science and New Age teach, mm-hmm. he's a teacher, can lead to healing and wholeness. Oh my goodness, they're looking just at the benefits can lead to a mystical connection to God in quotes, why is it in quotes, as well as an awareness and experience of not only the sacred with a capital S, that sounds like shamanism, Mm -hmm. but the oneness and unity of all life, which sounds like Eastern. 
Mm -hmm. This is just a mishmash. This is what mm -hmm. they, in the new age, they call the spiritual buffet. Help us out here, Allison. What's going on? Let's just start, start with Jesus mm -hmm. because we always start with Jesus. Mm -hmm. So what I read in progressivechristianity.org is that they believe Jesus is just a human. Is that, that's, yeah. Yeah. So that's so, heresy right there. Yeah, exactly. Do they yeah. teach that he emptied his divinity, like Philippians 2 is twisted sometimes, or do they believe he's just created? He's just, it's not really he's created. He's just a person who has good ideas to work, or good, um, he's a good teacher to follow, if that makes so, sense. Okay, so that's Christian science and Gnosticism and mm -hmm. New Age right there. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, that that's... That means they're not Christian, if because yeah. Jesus was full. You, you and I both know he was fully mm -hmm. God and fully man. Yep. He's the second person of the Holy Trinity. Mm -hmm. He's not just a good person to follow. Exactly. So, so, so you're just. I don't even have to go any farther. Progressive Christianity is a Christian, <laughs> right there. Boom. Yes. Thank you. Yes. This is crazy, you guys. This. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, right away, we see that. Progressive Christianity denies the authority of Scripture right, that right off the bat, just with this first point, by, telling, by saying that Jesus is just a good human teacher. Now, is it like some of the heretical churches that have a person? I mean, they're cults. They, they follow Ellen White or Mary Baker Eddy or Joseph Smith. Is there a person who's coming up with this heresy, or is this committees? I, I'd say it's definitely committees. I would say it's a, but it's not like a collective, it's not like, hey, we're all going to like, it's not, structured. it's not structured. It just kind of happened, if that makes sense. The yeah, so it's just, together. it's group yeah. deception, group, yeah. group delusion. Okay. Yes. yes. Um, so in a nutshell, they deny Jesus as God. They reduce him to a human teacher. Um they believe by follow, and for context, follow means to do what Jesus did, not actually say do what he says, if that makes sense. Yeah. Um, follow this teacher, and you will find healing and wholeness and a connection with God. Now, again, that translate as do these works, and you'll have a connection with God, which we all know that well, you and I know that Jesus Christ is the only way to God. So it's, yeah. it's very twisted but there's just enough truth in it to uh, ease your conscience. And uh, well, it, it sounds time. like it's just using Christian terminology to hook mm -hmm. people into deception. Yep. Yep. How, let me just ask you, how pervasive is this? I mean, are there a lot of progressive Christian churches and do they call themselves progressive Christian? I mean, is there a buyer beware term to watch out for? Um, so I would say the theology of progressive Christianity is everywhere. Wow. Like, it's in many, many different denominations, um, but people don't realize it. And I, I attribute that to people not reading the Bible. Like, of course, yeah. In a nutshell. Barely anyone um, has read the whole Bible. Exactly. And you have to read the whole Bible. You can't just read a little bit. The red letter Christianity doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So um, back to the point. Um, so if you follow, meaning do the works as Jesus did, you'll have a connection with God. Um, and a it, mystical connection, it says. Yes. So that's the desire for mystical experiences yes. that yes. is, is yes. the driving point of many, many yes. false religions. Do you know of labyrinths? Oh, yeah. We had them in the New Age. Yep. It's part of goddess worship. Yeah, they... Um, the labyrinths are coming back in these churches. I noticed that the, there's a church here in town that has it, mm -hmm. and they're very liberal. Yep. Um, and, you know, I'm, you know this, but, like, the whole idea is you go in a labyrinth and you empty yourself out mm -hmm. and then put God in. Mm -hmm. And I remember, like, the church camp that I went to had one of these. I remember doing it. Um, I remember doing it um, after I was saved and didn't know any better because um, I was very newly saved at that point. Yeah, dangerous practice. I haven't talked yeah. much about labyrinth. I'm glad you're talking about yeah. it. Stay away. Yeah. Uh, Just because something's an ancient tool does not mean mm -hmm. it's a good tool. And anything that's 
Yeah, you know, I mean, a lot of the um, Catholic mysticism seems to be very intriguing. Watch out for being intrigued. That's often the devil Mm -hmm. holding a little temptation Mm -hmm. out. Mm -hmm. Um, Another thing with the labyrinth they use, they use the idea they they I was told that, you know, ancient Christians use these to get closer to God. And I'm sitting there going, this is really pagan. Yep. 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 There's a reason why goddess mm-hmm. circles use labyrinths. So we move on to number two. Mm-hmm. Okay. So the second heretical point of progressive Christianity, and those of you who are progressive Christians, prove me wrong. Show me in the Bible where I'm wrong. This is heresy. Affirm that the teachings of Jesus provide but one of many ways. And it's not even to, to God. It says to experience God. Here's that that this is a sign of a false teaching, you guys, is experience over scripture. And then to experience God, and why is God in quotes, and, and the sacredness, and, and sacredness is with a capital S and no quotes. So they're going for sacred over God, which is really pagan. I mean, that's, that's like devil worship stuff almost. Sacredness, oneness, and unity of life. So there's this whole thing of don't offend anybody. Yep. Um, don't don't talk out about other religions because they're nice mm-hmm. people and you might have hurt their feelings. Mm-hmm. And and so because at first I thought they were going to John fourteen six, Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. No one gets to the Father except through me. But no, they just obliterated it with like a dynamite and shredded it. Mm-hmm. And so we're putting this on the screen, but this is not this is this is not orthodox theology. This is a uh, violation of primary Christianity. Mm-hmm. So let's talk about this. Again, I brought up universalism in my, in my short testimony, because again, they believe everyone is saved, regardless of what anyone believes of Jesus. Um, you know, that means, oh wait, all religions are the same. And it's, so do they believe yeah. Hitler saved? Probably not. Okay. So they do make a few exceptions for yes. really bad people. Yes. Okay. Um, because he didn't follow the list of trying to be a good person. Like if we go back to all of these points, build off of point one of Jesus being the good teacher. So um, if Jesus, you know, dies for everyone and he's the good teacher, and if you are following him as a progressive Christian and he, so you're following him as a progressive Christian and um, you're trying to be a good person, which really under that is you're just trying to cover up your sin and it's just pride. Um, But, and if all of other religions are trying to be a good person, it just makes sense that all religions are the same. And not Mm. only religions, but philosophies and the new age and atheism. Like, yeah, no one reads the Bible. I'm convinced. (laughs) I know. Or they read two pages. They certainly don't. Keep. Let me just for a minute, mm-hmm. while you were talking about this, let me go to and that they're going to teach us how to understand the Bible. And it says, the, the Bible, um, where is this? Oh, they say, don't take the Bible literally. Rather, read the Bible in light of its historical context and mostly as a meta- metaphorical narrative. Free God from the bonds. And this is, this is heresy, I'm telling you of supernatural theism view Jesus not as divine, but fully human in what universe. I mean, if, if nothing else, if they're benefits oriented, there's no benefits from this except for Satan will probably give you some rewards. I mean, this is absolutely the opposite of Christianity. It it makes me furious to be on this side. I have to, (laughs) well, I'm glad that Jesus opened both of our eyes to the deception and mostly through his word, just, um, comparing everything to scripture, you don't have to be a theologian to see that there's a big difference here. With, with this point though, um, there are a couple um, words or phrases to look out for with this point. Um, and they are like there are certain buzzwords that um, progressive Christians use um, and that they are interfaith, which if you know your Bible, you know that that's just 
stay away. <laughs> when I was a new ager, I used to think interfaith was the real Christians because yep. they, they were woke. They got yeah. it that everyone is saved. Yeah, yeah. so I, I remember interfaith. Now, and another one that, you know, we use as, as Bible-believing Christians, as evangelicals, is unity. This is tricky because this is how Bible-believing Christians can get wrapped up in this stuff. So when a church or a teacher or anyone really, or an article or something, uses the word unity, figure out the context and why, use your discernment and put it up to scripture. Because unity, yes, Jesus talks about unity and how he wants all of us to be unified as brothers and sisters in Christ. But is it the right unity? Yeah, we're not going to forsake biblical teaching yeah. and and uh, partner with false teachers because that seems to be peaceful and and unifying. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's the thing with false teachings uh, is that they'll use the same terms as the Bible, but with an entirely different definition. Mm-hmm. Is another one that can trip um, Bible believing Christians up, is, and that is ecumenicalism. Mm-hmm. So denominations coming together. Um, and the really big one that's happening right now, um, and I, I, I saw some of this actually after watching both um, American Gospels, um, uh, was evangelicals with Catholics. Yeah. And that's a big no-no because mm-hmm. there are still things written in Catholicism that are not biblical and that they still ascribe to, even though they say they don't believe it. It's still written in their books. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there may be saved Catholics. We're not disputing that, but the works-based salvation, um, some engage in idolatry and including the Pope as an idol. And Mm -hmm. so it's just, it, it's not, it's not compatible with, with um, Orthodox Christianity. Exactly. All right, so let's go to point three, which again, this we're not advocating, we're simply going to put this up so that we can refute it. Uh, Mm -hmm. Seek and create community that is inclusive of all, in all caps, people, including but not limited to, and then they have this list, Um, definitely everyone's invited, and this was like the Episcopal church I went to, where everyone could do communion, even though the Bible says that that's dangerous to mm-hmm. do communion if you're not uh, an Orthodox believer. So they're actually putting people in harm's way with this. Yes. Um, and they're also comforting people in their sins, saying yes. it's okay if you're sinning, and that can send people to hell. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm just going to actually read their, li- their list of people. Um, conventional Christians, so you and I, um, questioning skeptics, believers and Gnostics, those of all races, cultures, and nationalities, those of all sexual orientations and gender identities, those of all classes and abilities, those historically marginalized, and all creatures and plant life. When did plant life need to be saved? Yeah, that's, um, <laughs> like you said, it's Romans 1, worshiping exactly. the, creator, the creation. I remember listening to a story on, on Christian radio, this was a couple of years ago, about a prominent um, seminary with, within the denomination that I grew up in. And they were writing down their sins to a plant and asking the plant for repentance. You know, I remember that story. And it was so insane that I forgot it. But mm-hmm. gosh, that is that is just crazy. I'll see if I yeah. can find that story to illustrate this. Yeah. So that's progressive Christianity is talking to plants. I mean, you, you know, I mean, some people talk to their plants to grow, but you don't confess your sins to a plant. Exactly. Are they thinking plants are our brothers and sisters? I think more it's people feel bad of what they've done to the environment. So they want to make retribution for it. So that's, I think that's kind of where it comes from. And again, it comes from the, I want to be a good person. And this is what a good person does. So I'm going to do it. Um, the whole idea of basically, you know, including plants in all of this in this list is include yeah, to be inclusive of everyone and everything. The idea of the twisting of what love is. 
Mm-hmm. So in liberal progressive Christianity, it's love is acceptance of everyone and everything, if that makes sense. And again, this goes back to point one, because everything you know builds off of it, that if we're all striving to be good people, um, we're, we all must be, you know, we're all trying to be good. So we need to be accepting of everyone, flaws, sins, you know, whatever, if that makes sense. Um, and by accepting sin, specifically, they think, you know, and I was in this camp too. I, you know, I thought I loved like Jesus did. Because in scripture, yes, Jesus hangs out with sinners. And you'll hear that phrase like, oh, well, Jesus hung out with sinners. So, you know, it's, it's loving to accept people. Yeah, but they don't go into that he said for them to repent and sin exactly. no more. Exactly. He wasn't sitting there going, oh, continue to be a prostitute or a tax collector. Exactly. They, they conveniently leave that part out. They haven't read it. Exactly. They heard it from someone. So this is a good person religion which we know being a good person doesn't get you anywhere. It actually gets you into hell. Yeah. There's probably a lot of good people in hell. Yeah. And guess what? They're still sinning. Mm -hmm. Well, we're all sinners, but we have a, we have guidance about how to deal with sin and this is not it. Exactly. Um, But one of the things about, and I felt this before I was an actual Christian that I had you know, the idea that you have to love and accept everyone and everyone you can't come in contact to, come in contact with. And it's an impossible standard because if you look at how do you treat your family? Like if you're a progressive and you ascribe to this, I have to love and accept everyone for who they are, regardless of what they've done to anyone or me or myself, it, you can't actually do that. Like, yeah, how would that affect parenting then? Exactly. <laughs> this kind of explains my childhood. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, this, this is a huge lie. This twisting mm-hmm. of love is a huge lie from, from Satan. I'll just yeah. Say it. I mean, it goes back to the parenting analogy. If your parents love you, they're going to say, don't run in the street where there's traffic. Mm-hmm. Even if it hurts your feelings. Exactly. Should we go to point four? Not uh, sure. Okay. So point f- four in this heretical countdown is know that the way we behave toward one another and earth, capitalized, is the fullest expression of what we believe. So they're twisting um, to love your neighbor as yourself, it sounds like here. Therefore, we vow to walk as Jesus might have walked in the world with radical compassion, inclusion. Wait a minute. Where does it say Jesus was inclusive? I mean, I see the woman at the well yeah. um, could be an example of that. But I, And bravery to confront and positively change the injustices we experience. Who wrote this? So this point, I, you know, I see this and I see it as, okay, back to teacher Jesus here. It's a list of, okay, we need to figure out this is how we follow Jesus because we're, we want to be compassionate. We want to be inclusive, which Jesus necessarily wasn't. All no, in- otherwise at, at, the, <laughs> at, the, at, the, at the pool of Bethesda, he would have healed everybody there instead exactly. of just the paralyzed man. He would have healed exactly. every blind person, every yes. person who had demonic oppression, but he would choose specific people. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So this, this whole idea and, and bravery to confront and, pos- and positively change the injustice we experience as those, as, those, like, as those we see others experiencing, like it's this whole idea of we, we want to be like Jesus, but we don't actually want to be like Jesus. I say that because progressive Christians don't believe the Bible is this the authoritative word of God. So they've made up their own version of Jesus. Yes. Okay. That's what the new agers do. They have a Jesus spirit guide who says you can do whatever you want and and says a lot of these points. So this is, this just is my point again, this is new age with the Christian veneer. Yeah. Uh, So um, they don't believe that the Bible is divinely inspired. They have 
they don't have a biblical understanding of what compassion is or what love is or um yeah or justice and um specifically with what's happened in the last two months um i wanted to I wanted to touch on a little bit of criti critical theory and critical race theory. I am not an expert at it. I'm just going to put that out there right now. Um, but this is my little caveat. Um, Christians need to be in their word so they can see that these theories are not biblical. If you want to learn what justice is biblically, read what the word says. If you want to learn what biblical compassion is read the bible part of the reason why i decided okay it's time it's time to go through these eight points it's time to do this because i see so many people led astray with like it's good to be compassionate but we oh, yeah. need to know what's biblical compassion what's worldly compassion um and so many christians are being led astray through this worldly compassion and all these different theories that were just thought up mm -hmm. by people. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, the Bible tells us to take care of orphans and widows and visit people in prison and feed the hungry and uh, clothe the needy. So there's nothing that, I mean, Christians are some of the most compassionate and giving people I've ever met and the amount of charity work that Christians do in secret mm -hmm. because we're told not to boast about it is it's mind blowing. Mm -hmm. um, but we don't center our salvation on it. That's mm -hmm. some, that's a fruit of the salvation. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Progressive, progressive Christians think if they do these works, they will be saved. Even because that makes them a good person. Gosh, that's, that's exactly what we believed in the New Age, that if we recycled enough and if we um, treated animals well, picked up the litter, then, gosh, we're going to heaven. And we all imagined that God was there with his clipboard saying, good job, as we're picking up trash. Yep. 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 I know this deception well. Mm. Should we move on to point five? Find grace in the search for understanding and believe there is more value in questioning with an open mind, oh boy, there's a trigger phrase, open mind and open heart, than in absolutes or dogma. This specific point is born out of a legalistic approach to biblical Christianity. Because if you think about it, if you are only taught, hey, to follow Jesus is to do these rules perfectly and not hear the actual gospel. Yeah. And then your faith breaks down because you actually don't have faith in Christ. And you look at progressive Christianity and be like, oh, it's really just an easier list of, of do's and don'ts. Oh. I'm going to go over there. So then it's almost like with the royal laws, um, they're only focusing on love your neighbor, and then they're defining it for themselves. Yep. Yep. How, this point five is... Find grace in the search. So grace, they're meaning, again, they're talking about accepting everyone in their sins, right? Yes. Is that what they define yes. grace as? Okay. So accepting everyone in their sin was the term that we talked about just a second ago with love. Um, but also, like, accepting people's questions. But there's no real searching of the questions. It's this idea of, I have all these questions, and... Um, I'm, I'm more humble if I have these questions because it's not possible to know God's will. But I'm going to do my best to try to figure it out without actually reading what the Bible says. Oh, so, so what's this, what is, do they do sermons? There's no expository sermons, obviously. There, I mean, is it yeah, there are sermons, but majority of the sermons. Um, so one of the things that I really, really learned was the enemy takes about this much truth mm -hmm. or, or this much truth and twists it just yep. enough to make it a lie. Yep. Um, and that's how I would argue the majority of, if you're in a progressive church, a lot of the sermons are, are, are put out. Um, mm -hmm. That's how these pastors are trained. So an example would be like, 
love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, so because um, we just discussed what love is in progressive Christianity is acceptance of sin, acceptance of everyone, everything. Um, there's this idea is like you have, they'll, they'll give the scripture, but they'll put what they know to be what love is um, into that sermon, if that makes sense. Yeah, to, so they're, of, they, they yeah. do Bible plus. Yeah, it's a lot of um, eisegesis. It's a lot a of, lot of eisegesis. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a lot of imposing what the world thinks on the Bible versus what the Bible says about us. That's really troubling. Yeah. I'm so glad you're calling this out, Allison. Thank you. <laughs> now we need to um, mm -hmm. put a spotlight, a biblical spotlight on these false teachings. Mm -hmm. Should we move yeah. to number six? Yes. Yeah. Okay. And, and now we kind of get it. There's some consistency to their theology. Mm -hmm. uh, number six, that work toward peace and justice among all people and all life on earth. So there's that utopian desire. So that almost sounds like socialism. Yeah, um, they wouldn't call it socialism. Um, one of the like phrases and ideas and excuse me of a lot of the stuff that, I, that was taught um, at the seminary I went to was we want to eradicate um, people being poor. Like we want to make sure everyone in America, like we don't we don't we want to eradicate everyone who's home. Uh, yeah, I mean that's socialism. Yeah, basically, well, we want to give enough. To, you know, to make sure no one is homeless anymore. And I'm right. thinking, again, going, but Jesus said the homeless and the poor will always be with us. Yeah. He, I mean, he talked about that himself. The, you know, the son of man has no pillow for his head and mm -hmm. has no home. So, mm -hmm. and he definitely talked against wealth as mm -hmm. a, an idol. So, you know, it's just such a lovely thought that everyone would be equally compensated on this earth, but that's mm -hmm. not how human nature works. Mm -mm. And as I say, if you were ignoring sin, and again, accepting everyone's sin and trying to be this, like you said, a utopia type of world and working towards that, well, we must be good people. So we must be compassionate. We must be loving because we do these works. And so big God rewards. To, yeah. So God has to accept us. Yeah. So with this point, um, this is another point where again, well-meaning Bible-believing Christians um, can get deceived because like we've been saying, um, a lot of progressive Christians do not hold the authority to scripture and a lot of evangelicals don't know that. So they'll be given these books about social justice and compassion and they come from Christian names. We need to be aware of that. And, and that comes, again, we need to keep reading our Bibles. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Another thing is with this point, I, I see progressive Christians trying to fix a spiritual problem with a system of works made by man, and that's not possible. That is a huge, huge point to make. Mm -hmm. Because it's a sin problem. That's mm -hmm. the reason why our world is messed up is because of sin. And if you're not going to address sin, it's nothing's going to change. And no, yeah. I mean, we, we can see this in the places where it sounds so lovely to take away police and have everyone live in harmony. But now, you know, the shootings are up by what, 248% and it's just crime gone wild in mm -hmm. cities like New York City, because humans are sinful, as you said, mm -hmm. ever since Genesis three, the fall of humanity, we have a depraved nature. Mm -hmm. And we need guidance. Mm hmm. We need to have commandments, the moral law. And then point number seven, um, protect and restore the integrity of our earth and all creation. Um, that's the one where I addressed the plant story <laughs> um, earlier. Um, I mean, it is good to take care of the garden. Exactly. exactly. The humans humans yeah. were told to take care of the garden mm -hmm. and the environment, but this takes it to uh, front and center beyond the gospel, right? Yeah, the story that I talked about earlier um, with um, the confessing their sins to a plant and repenting to this plant. Um, and 
it's again trying to follow the good moral teacher Jesus in an environmental way, if that makes sense. So it usually turns into an idol um, where they start worshiping creation. Um, I remember I was in an ethics class and I, I took the environmental part and I remember telling, like we had to give presentations and stuff. And I remember, I remember telling the class and like, if we're more concerned about a garden or recycling over human life, there's an issue. And I, I have, uh, there are many, many reactions. Um, <laughs> so they, they didn't get that, that taking care of no. humans is a priority? No, they didn't. Usually, I say usually, because not every progressive Christian ascribes to all of these, if that okay. makes sense. Okay. So usually a progressive Christian, when they're talk, when, when it comes to the abortion issue, um, usually it's, oh, um, you know, it's, it's human, human rights for the mother. She can do what she wants because it's her body. We need to be compassionate and loving towards her. She's, she's hurting all this stuff. And I'm like, wait, no, she's killing her baby. Like, <laughs> yeah. So they go to the ultra liberal, her body, her choice, instead yeah. of the baby's body and the baby's yeah. choice. Yeah. So no wonder their, their website uh, promotes liberal politicians also. Yep. Scary yeah. stuff. This is really scary. Here we go. Point eight, commit to a path of lifelong learning. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that, mm -hmm. but define learning. What are you learning? Compassion and selfless love. Yeah. I mean, that sounds like self-esteem culture right there on this journey toward a personally authentic and meaningful faith. All right, well, let's uh, break this one down. Okay, so it's the whole idea that if I learn enough, I will be loving enough and I will be compassionate enough. Again, to be a good person, to get into heaven, to have that connection with God, everything that we've been covering. Um, just while you were reading that, selfless love just kind of like jumped out at me. And it's the idea that, again, the whole like we're questioning everything, progressives, question everything. I'm humble enough to not have the answers. So if you're in that state of, I don't have all the answers, but I'm going to do my best to have love and compassion. And I want to learn what those are. Um, that's what selfless love means. It has, no, it has nothing to do with me. And the interesting thing is when you have that stance, you become very prideful in yourself. Like I remember before I was a Christian, I would look at my, my Christian family members and be like, they're crazy. I'm not like them. I'm better than them. Does that make sense? Yeah, we had that same pridefulness in the new age because we were woke. Yeah. And everybody else was asleep and unaware. And, and we thought our life purpose was to wake up the unaware Christians and let them know pretty much the same doctrine. I mean, these yeah. just add in... Uh, tarot cards and crystals and you got new age right here. Yeah. It's crazy. Like one of the things that especially in, Oh, the class, the, the spiritual practices class, the one where everyone described their experiences and stuff. I remember like sitting in that class going, this just sounds very new agey and very much just mysticism. How, how we're supposed to be discerning of the spirits. How do we know what spirit you may be talking to is God? Just because he says he's Jesus or he says he's God doesn't make him God. Does he do the same thing that's in God's word? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So first John four, the testing of the spirits was not applied. It was just called spiritual disciplines. Yeah. So did they go into contemplative prayer and Lectio Divina and yeah. some of those practices. Okay. Yeah. Those are very, very popular. And it's all means to get to God. Um, I remember reading. What, a book. Okay, let's just stop right there. And let me yeah. ask you to define that phrase to get to God or get close, get to know God closer to God. So is yeah. it, is it like enlightenment? Is that what they're after? Yeah. It's more of like, if I do these practices, I will have this mystical experience with God because they want, and I think every 
human wants and experience with God somehow because we're spiritual beings. Um, but because of the denying of sin and the true gospel, they can't get a relationship with God. So they're going to look to other religions. They're going to look to Lecta Divina. They're going to look to contemplative prayer. They're going to look to all of these things to get God when Jesus Christ is the only way to God. That's right. That's so well said. Yeah, our broken relationship with God because of the sin of our ancestors and our sin nature, which can only be repaired through Jesus and the work Mm -hmm. that he did on the cross. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so if they're not addressing repentance, then their relationship with God will continually be broken and frustrate them. So they'll look for mystical experiences, counterfeit. Jesus um, is the way to God and Satan will offer a counterfeit to everything. I think we can see that progressive Christianity is not grounded in any scripture that is the Holy Bible, the Holy Canonical Bible, but is uh, grounded in wishful thinking socialism, new age, probably Gnosticism in here, and people-pleasing. Yep. Yeah, it's just a yeah. hot mess. It, it really is. Um, and again, like, and I know this, this sounds weird because when we hear legalism in a Christian sense, in a biblical sense, we think like lots of rules and Bible, like, you know, and like in reality, Progressive Christianity is a type of legalism. Yeah, it is. Like I say that to people, I'm like, wait, what? And then I explain specifically, you know, through through these points mm-hmm. and stuff, how how they're broken down, and it's like, oh, oh my goodness, it's just another set of rules. Yep. Same with New Age. So New Age has got its rules. It's very works based. Yep. So uh, to say that Christianity is there are legalistic denominations yes. and there's legalistic yes. people um, yes. but that's different than pointing someone back to um, the moral law mm-hmm. um, to obey Jesus because we love him mm-hmm. that's not legalism legalism is that you get saved by your works and mm-hmm. a true Christian doesn't say that mm-hmm. whether you, it's, it's either saved by saved by your works whether it be a conservative viewpoint or a liberal viewpoint. That's right. Neither of them is going to save you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Only Thank Jesus you. Christ can save you. Yeah. So if we read our Bible, we know that it's very clear in there. It's not a hidden secret anywhere. The reason why my heart in all of this and why I want to talk about it and expose what's really going on here is because I was in it and I felt trapped. I know that sounds kind of weird because a lot of people who are in the movement say they're free. Well, no, they're not. And I wasn't because I wasn't free of my sin. Um, And I want people to be free of their sin. Like they don't, they don't know that they need to be free from their sin. Um, And I want that person, whoever you are, if you felt like I felt, go to Jesus, go talk to him. He's our rest. He's our peace. He's our wholeness. Um, and he loves you, and he died on a cross for you. Um, and no one ever told me that, and I want to tell people that. I want to bring people to the water. You just got to drink it. <laughs> yeah, and one of the reasons that you agreed to this interview, Allison, is because you do care about the people yeah, who are yeah. in the deception. Yeah, I really do care about I really, really do care about the people, and I really care about those who may be dabbling in this and not even realize it. Um, Because once you start going down with some of these principles, it's just a slippery slope and they're lies from the enemy and he's there to kill, steal and destroy, not to give you life. Only Jesus is. So um, I don't have, like I don't hold anything against people in the movement, the people I still know in progressive Christianity. Um, I want them to know the truth. And even if they disagree with me, I'm going to have some fun conversations after this. (laughs) Um, But I care enough to tell them the truth, Mm -hmm. fun conversations. 
patients after this. <laughs> um, but I care enough to tell them the truth. Mm -hmm. And these people who are in these movements, like my, my intro to theology class was taught by a Jewish woman, not a Messianic Jew. Mm -hmm. Like these are the people who are training these pastors. Um, these are the scholars that are training these pastors. Um, they're not telling you the truth. And I want to tell you the truth. Yeah. And so it's all about the gospel. It's all about Jesus, fully man and yes. fully God, both yes. hypostatic union, yes. who came to earth because we are completely fallen and who gave his life in suffering and sacrifice to take our sins from from us to uh, atone for the sins, to take the punishment we deserved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and he, of course, died and was raised from the dead three days later, and he's now at the right hand of his mm -hmm. Father, uh, mm -hmm. the Holy Trinity, mm -hmm. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, th this is Orthodox Christianity, folks, and that the Bible is God's inerrant, God-breathed word. And if your church isn't teaching that, then that's a big red flag. Mm -hmm. uh, and if someone's unsaved and they're not hearing the gospel, that's a big, huge, huge issue mm -hmm. for eternity. So, Allison, can someone get a hold of you? I mean, are you welcoming yeah. letters? Uh, okay. Uh, um, I am on Instagram. Um, you can just find me at just Allison Rothborough, one word, on Instagram. I just finished the series on these eight points, the, the points that we've been discussing. Um, I'm probably going to do more. Um, I write blog posts. I'll probably do more blog posts on this stuff just because of how popular some of the stuff is coming out. Um, a lot, well, a lot of stuff and because of um, the, the climate of the culture right now, a lot of progressive Christianity is coming into evangelicalism, Bible believing, Bible believing churches. Um, and that needs to stop. Well, thank you very much for um, highlighting this um, this popular, popular heresy and error. And uh, we're glad you're going to still continue teaching it with your blogs. That's how I um, came across your material. And I'm really glad you did this interview and that you're going to be available for people to talk mm -hmm. with you. We really appreciate your time. And mm -hmm. thank you to your family, too, for graciously giving us this space to record mm -hmm. this interview. Mm -hmm. Thank you for having me. This is really a really fun conversation. Um, and it was really nice to meet you. Yeah, you too, sis. <laughs>